Welcome, one and all, to Puppet History! Today, we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call History, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Wizard! Whoa! I'm your beloved host, The Professor. Thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Oh, Ryan Bergara! Are you ready? Yeah, man, look, I, I drew you. Oh, wow! wow. Wow. That's pretty good, right? That's a pretty sexy drawing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hey, <laughs> special guest, Ricky Wang! Are you ready? I am ready, Professor, but unfortunately, I did not draw you like Ryan did. I hope that is okay. Nothing more exciting than a blank slate. You can draw them after hours. Oh, I you can do, do that. that. Hey, I'm down to clown. I'm born again, you know? I'm ready to get even nastier in this new life of mine. Oh, God, all right. <laughs> I expect nothing less. Wonderful! Then let's crack in! Okay, all right, are you guys ready? Whoa, 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 hang on a sec. Back up, back up, Dad, Dad. You having troubles behind the camera there? I don't know what I'm holding, but I am holding it and I am pointing it. Well, just hang on to that thing and keep it pointed right here. Okay, Mr. Nolan, <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, you guys are doing great. Okay, now, to begin, are you big sports fans? Football, iced hockey, maybe a polo, water, or the uh, horsey variety? Oh, I love sports, you know that. Oh yeah, you're a big sports guy. You're always talking about, oh, my team did good this weekend. And sometimes you come in and you go, oh, I'm grumpy because they didn't do good. It's more like, we want it. Fuck yeah, we're the champs. We're the champs. We're the champs. I'm the champ. I'm one of those people that just want both teams to have fun. Oh. <laughs> I despise you then. No, you know what? That's the spirit of this whole season. I want both of you guys to have fun out there. No, there should be a winner and there should be a loser. <laughs> oh, okay, if you insist. <laughs> well, today's story is about sports fans and how an artificially divided society is exploited by the powerful to keep themselves in power. Bring your giant foam fingers down off the mantle because we're talking the Nika riots. All right, let's do it. Party. All right, well, in the third century, the Roman Empire was divided up into sections to make it easier to govern. Though the western half fell in 476, the eastern half, which historians now call the Byzantine Empire, kept on plugging along. Here's an easy question for all you They Might Be Giants listeners out there. Who? What was the capital of the Byzantine Empire? A. Byzantium. B. Constantinople. Or C, Istanbul. First question, always very fun. Oh, Ryan, what do you got, three buttons open right there? Oh yeah, I do, baby. As the episode goes on, are we gonna get lower and lower? <laughs> <laughs> if you play your cards right, if you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, Ryan, what do you got? <laughs> I got B, I started to spell Constantinople and I realized I don't know how to spell it, so I just stopped. Uh, honestly, but, uh, you're, you're on a roll. You just got the very easy part left. You can do it, I believe in you. I, I believe in you, actually, I think Constant you can get this. Yeah. Noble. noble? Like that? Yeah. Just noble? Yeah, baby! Nice! A jelly bean for the beef boy! Hell yeah, I was just gonna write John Constantine instead. What would we call that? A spelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> How about you, Ricky? What you got? I also wrote B, Constantinople, but I also drew little, um, what are these called? Caracas? Huh? Morac Maracas? 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 Because I think there's a... Uh, Constantinople. Dun, 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 yeah, he's singing so. it. Don't sing all the words, otherwise they'll sue us. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna give you each a jelly bean for that one. It is right. Well, sort of. It's a bit of a trick question. Oh, you nasty little. Because all three of those are actually the same city. In 330, the ruler of the Byzantine Empire, Constantine, Hello. changed Byzantium's name to something a little more his own name. Constantinople. That'd be like if you uh, lived in Bergara Berg or Ricky Town. Ooh, oh, Ricky sounds Town fun. sounds good. Yeah, have a drink. Wangapalooza. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wangapalooza. We get crazy there. Don't ask me what we do there. Yeah, I was about I'm to say. just the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Located at the nexus between Europe and Asia, Constantinople was a gooey-ass melting pot, governed by Roman law, with Greek as its primary language, and Christianity as its de facto religion. For leisure, citizens would gather at the enormous Hippodrome to watch that most Byzantine of pastimes, which was... What? 
Now this isn't an official question with graphics and everything, but if you guess the sport we're gonna talk about, there might be a little jelly bean in it for you. What kind of sport did they play there? Ooh. Sports. Okay, BB, what you got? Uh, murder. <laughs> okay. I wrote something similar. I wrote gladiator ring. Well, you're both a little bit off, um, because what they actually did... I know I'm a little bit off. <laughs> <laughs> you're sick. <laughs> Not right up here, dude. He's wrong up <laughs> here. That's right. Elevator doesn't go all the way to the top. Hey! Uh, it was, uh, chariot racing. Oh, cool. Yeah! Oh. Great. Did people die? Probably. Yeah! Now today, watching horses do laps while men smack the shit out of them evokes images of lonely weirdos hanging around the off-track betting parlor. But back in the day, oh, it was the place to be. Up to a dozen teams of four horses each would race seven laps. Now there weren't a ton of rules. Crashes were a given, and many racers were killed by being dragged, trampled, or crushed. This violence was part of the draw. Yeah, sure. Adds to the rich tapestry of entertainment that they're weaving there. I would be terrified. If somebody got like dismembered? <laughs> yes! Be like, oh shit, yes. his head popped off. We've said this before, we'll say it again. Here at Puppet History and Watcher Entertainment, we do not endorse murder. But, I don't really watch Jeopardy that often, and I'm realizing that if Mayim Bialik beat contestants to death when they got an answer wrong, I'd probably tune in more. All right, let's go to final Jeopardy. Can we clean that podium off? Charioteers readily risked racing as winners could become extremely rich, pocketing up to 15 bags of gold per victory. For instance, over the course of his career, the most successful racer of all time, Diocles, won enough money to feed the city of Rome for a whole year. But I don't think he did that. No. Now at first, charioteers were divided into four teams, but when Western Rome fell, there were only two. The greens and the blues. Ooh, pick a chariot team. And really, I want you guys to put your backs into cheering because you'll win a jelly bean whenever your team gets a victory. So what's it gonna be, blue or green? I call blue. I want a green. Good, I, can't, I don't like being any team that's green. Why? Celtics. I don't know what this means. You don't know that the Celtics wear green? I, I know that. That's like the most storied rivalry in sports. <laughs> Is it? I yeah, the Lakers and Celtics. Like... Don't know anything about it. That goes back decades. It actually saved the NBA. Cool. Wow. I should be making, yes. I, we should make Ryan history. <laughs> yes. Ryan history would be superior. We would know about sports and things like that. Right, Professor? Yeah. yeah uh, I'm just pulling your leg. No, <laughs> don't pull it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. No, I mean, don't, don't. Please don't. <laughs> Gentlemen, go green. Peek behind your chairs. Oh, what wonder. Whoa, you? wait, how did you know I was going to be blue? Because <laughs> you're blue gora, what? baby. What would have happened if I picked blue? Um, it simply wouldn't have happened because I know what lies in your deepest heart. You ready to eat my dust, Wang? I have a feeling green is going to come out victorious. That was the yeah. nicest taunt I've ever heard. <laughs> Should I be more like, <sighs> Yeah, really get in there. Really get mean about it. Give them some good dirty talk. Damn you, Blue. Yeah. You suck. Come on, be angry, ah, Ricky. Ah, Look at the ah, back of my head. Get used to that view, because that's all you're going to fucking see. Whoa, right in front of you, baby. Oh, you're going damn, Blue. Whoa, yeah, now that's what that's I like to see. Oh, I get yeah. it now. Now I want you to carry this uh, vitriolic hate <sighs> in your hearts for the rest of this episode. All right, I could do that. That felt great. As remains the case today, supporters could go a little over the top with their fandoms. So green and blue are now your whole identities. Diehards would wear outlandish clothes and haircuts to identify themselves, chanting Nika, which meant win or conquer. Some would throw nail-studded tablets into the arena to disable rival charioteers and curse them. Holy shit. Yeah, that's wild, right? If I was able to throw like a football and hit Jason Tatum in the head when he's trying to shoot a free throw, that'd be pretty <laughs> sweet. In fact, one discovered tablet reads, quote, I call upon you, O oh demon, whoever you are, to ask that from this hour, from this day, from this moment, you torture and kill the horses of the green faction, and that you kill and crush completely the drivers, Calris, Felix, Primulus, and Romanus, and that you'd leave not a breath in their bodies. That's 
That sound familiar, Ryan? Begging a demon to kill your enemies? <laughs> no, it's really fun for uh, someone to make a mistake. Maybe that person's your friend and then to keep reminding them of it. That's really mature. But that's how I let you know that everything's okay because we can laugh. <laughs> 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 okay, moving along. Well, with all of Constantinople total simps for their teams, basically football hooligans, it wasn't uncommon for violence to break out between fan groups and spill into the streets. Once a blue charioteer defected to the Greens and won a race, sparking a riot in Antioch. So that'll be a little jelly bean for Ryan and his wonderful blue team. Yeah! yeah! Suck it, Ricky. You know Whoa. what? We're getting revenge. Well, yeah! Green's coming back, baby. You're gonna kill him. I'm, I'm... Oh. Kill him, Ricky. Uh, we're gonna kill him. Yes. I'm gonna find the address of every single one of your players. I'm gonna find out where they live. I'm gonna kill them in front of their families. Jesus. And then I'm gonna find out where their mom lives so that I could go there and show them pictures in person of her son cut up into little pieces. And I'm gonna laugh like this. <laughs> Look at him. I killed him. You're a Thick individual, Ryan Bergara. Yeah, he is. And in another instance, the Greens ambushed and massacred 3,000 Blues. Yay! A jelly bean for Ricky and his murderous Green team. Yeah! I don't think I've ever cheered on a massacre before, but... Well, you're doing it now! How times have changed. Riots would also occur even without races, especially when an emperor would cancel planned events. Both sides had their own special rioting chants, respectively singing, Burn here, burn there, not a green anywhere! And, set a light, set a light, not a blue in sight! <laughs> Not all that cutting. I don't think it matters if the chant is weak if you're actually killing people. <laughs> That's true. Now, these fans didn't just cheer on their team and beat the shit out of each other. The emperor himself would often attend chariot matches, sitting in a special little box called the Kathisma, and the different colored factions would chant to bring particular subjects to the attention of their leader. Perhaps the blues would chant for the price of food to be lowered, and the greens might chant for an official to be removed from office. This system of shouting grievances during a sports match allowed the emperor to at least appear to be addressing the issues of the common folk. Like if I was like, hey, lower taxes for the blue! And blue won, would my taxes be lowered? No, I think the emperor was just sort of like, ha ha, yes, I hear you. Is this the first political party? Uh, you know what? It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I was onto something. Well, at the beginning of 532, the emperor fielding complaints from the Kathisma was Justinian I, along with his wife and most trusted advisor, Theodora. Both grew up blues fans, by the way, so a little jelly bean for Ryan. But don't worry too much, Ricky, as when he became emperor, Justinian claimed to suddenly be neutral. Uh, yeah, well, I was hoping for like a green. A neutral is like, I'm still down. That's him just being a politician. Yeah, it's like when presidential candidates are like, yes, I'm sort of religious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, apart from their shared fandom, Theodora was an unusual pick for Justin, and special legislation had to be passed so he could even marry her, as Theodora had been an actress and a sex worker. The historian Procopius wrote a whole chapter on how they met, entitled, And How Theodora, Most Depraved of All Courtesans, Won His Love. There he wrote, quote, There was no shame in the girl, and no one ever saw her dismayed. No role was too scandalous for her to accept without a blush. In particular, Theodora was known for her recreation of the story of Leda and the Swan. Hey, what made Theodora's Leda in the Swan so dang special? A, it was performed entirely nude. B, it involved a large bird pecking from her groin. Or C, it was uh, audience interactive, if you catch my drift. All right, Ryan, what do you got? I'm gonna go D huh? for degenerate. I think it's all three of them. Whoa. Or it could just be D for the D, you know. <laughs> the D. Yeah. Ricky, what do you got? I got A, nude for body positivity theater. <laughs> we love nudity, don't we? What's wrong with being naked? Nothing, man. Bodies are bodies. You're half naked. Yes. Yeah, I got no pants on. We've talked to you about it and you, you persist to do it, so. I don't have anything down there. Doesn't matter. It works for you, professor. This is the same spiel he gives in HR meetings. And, yeah. <laughs> and we've had plenty of them. <laughs> 
Well, points to no one. Yes, apparently Theodora would let a swan or a goose eat grain from her groin. Oh! Uh, listen, you know, when you're competing for views against horses dragging smashed up carcasses around in the hippodrome, you gotta do what you gotta do to get those butts in the seats, you know what I mean? No, for sure, that does it. Well, now, while some scoffed at Theodora's past, she proved to be an incredibly good leader, with many believing it was actually she who ruled the empire. Most laws at the time mentioned her name, and she received foreign envoys and corresponded with other rulers. Specifically, she passed laws against trafficking young girls and gave women more benefits in divorce proceedings. Nice. That's cool. An artist, a politician, yeah. a butte. I imagine. Oh, she was probably stunning. Under Justinian and Theodore's rule, both men and women saw big reforms in the law. Justinian genuinely cared about his subjects and sought to root out corruption. He claimed he would rather the guilty go free than condemn the innocent and took stronger control over provincial governors. By his side throughout these reforms were two ministers, Belisarius, one of the greatest military generals of all time, and John of Cappadocia, basically the head tax collector. Okay, so you've got all the context you need. Wonderful. Now, the year 532. John of Cappadocia had instituted 26 new taxes, mostly on the wealthy. Hell yeah. And this pressure from the tax man led to tensions building among the people of Constantinople. And at a chariot race on January 10th, a riot broke out between the greens and the blues, resulting in at least one person dead. Ooh. That's it? I yeah. would expect more. You, didn't you just say there was a riot where 3,000 blues were killed and just one here? Yeah. Was it a pillow fight or something? Do you think you could kill somebody in a pillow fight? Suffocation. Yeah, if they were like, Jesus Sorry. Christ, yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> so if they, did I? Uh, speaking from experience over here. Now, seven men were found to have been responsible. Four were beheaded, and three were to be hanged. When the ropes were dropped, however, two of the men survived. One blue and one green. Really? Yeah. All right, it just doesn't seem very fair. Doesn't seem fair, does it? Does that make you angry? Does that make you want to riot? No, no. A little bit. Okay, yes, Ricky, yes. I'm yeah. jelly bean for Ricky. Yeah. For picking up what I'm putting down. No. The executioner tried to hang them again. But again, the men survived. Before a third plunge could be set up, monks interrupted the proceeding and took the two apparently unkillable men to the Church of St. Laurentius. Outside, an angry mob formed, demanding that the men be spared. Sensing tensions building, Justinian agreed to commute their sentences from death to just imprisonment. The mob was less than satisfied. To them, the fact that the pair had survived two hangings was clearly a sign from God that they should be freed. For now, however, the mob dissipated. Did the rope break? I'm try I'm just trying to figure out the mechanics of how they survived not one, but two hangings. I mean, they're beefy uh, jocks, you know? Maybe they've got uh, really sturdy necks. I don't know, man. I feel like if I went over to the bungalow in Santa Monica and hung a couple bros, they'd be dead in about 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, probably. Well, to be clear, Ryan has no plans on doing that. I'm not <laughs> gonna go down and hang people at the A mere three days after the botched hanging, another race was scheduled. As the Blues faced off against the Greens, the two team supporters separately began to chant for Justinian to release the two men with necks of steel. Justinian gave no reply, and the grumbling from the crowd only grew worse. For 21 races, Justinian ignored the calls of the people. Then, in the 22nd race, a new cry rang out. Long live the humane Greens and Blues! <gasps> oh, they joined? They joined. That probably would scare a lawmaker more than anything, just yeah. people, the unity. Yes, exactly. This was bad news for Justinian. The two-party system was now united as the Green Blues using Nika as their unifying rallying cry. Their enemy was no longer one another. It was Justinian. So both teams did have fun at the end. That's right. In the spirit of camaraderie and this story, I'm gonna, hang on here. The fuck? Oh, God, I can, I can oh shit. All right. Your head's not gonna pop off, is it? No, it's a okay. yeah. That was another trick. Look at this, Ryan. There we You're go. Oh, wonderful wait. little sash pals. <laughs> now that I've experienced the rivalry, I kind of miss it. 
Yeah, right? It, it gets the people going. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Well, but you have a new adversary, which is the government. <laughs> <laughs> that evening, the Green Blues gathered at the Praetorium, the prison, and demanded that the city prefect tell them what was to become of the prisoners. Ooh, what happened next? A, the prefect released the prisoners. B, the Green Blues started bickering amongst themselves again. Or C, a days long riot. Come on, this one's easy. It's easy one. <laughs> what yeah, did you put? Just put C, it's the riots. It's probably. the riots. They probably rioted. Yeah, yeah Ricky, what'd you yeah. put? I put B, green and blue started bickering again. Mm. I said, go green. Whoa, he's bickering again. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out via the magic of theater. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Nika! Nika! Oh, you there! City Prefect! You tell us what you're gonna do with our unhangable naughty boys! Tell us right now! Uh, uh, no, I'm not saying! Then move! What are you guys doing? We're freeing the prisoners! Oh man, that's the last thing that's supposed to happen at a prison! Uh, and we're killing a bunch of officials! Oh, Jesus! And we're setting the Praetorium on fire! Oh God, I I'm getting out of here! Oh! Yeah, that was pretty fun. What else can we burn? How about Justinian's palace? Oh, hell yeah, let's do that. Nika, Nika! That's what they did. <laughs> wow, a point for Beef Boy! <laughs> nice. Uh, now, with no sports-based division between the groups, the Green Blues realized they were pretty powerful and started a full-on riot. The first day, they burned the prison and set fire to the entrance of Justinian's palace, which spread and burned down the Senate House and the Church of St. Sophia. A jelly beans to you both! Wait, again? More jelly beans? Yeah, because oh. you're burning stuff! Oh, I s oh yes. That's a win for the blue-greens! Burn stuff down, you guys like that? Absolutely. Well, the next day, perhaps looking for a way to get the greens and blues to start hating one another again, Justinian announced more chariot races. The green blues showed up, but instead of taking their seats, they set fire to some of the buildings at the north end of the Hippodrome. That fire spread and destroyed some more buildings. Jelly beans to you both! With their initial demands met already, the group came up with even more demands. They wanted three ministers to be removed from office, specifically the prefect, the quester, and that old tax fella, John of Cappadocia. With basically no other option, Justinian caved and replaced them. Why those three particular people? They didn't like them. Oh, okay. They're like, might as well get some stuff done off our to-do list while we're angry. Seeing how quickly and efficiently the angry mob was replacing officials, some senators who weren't so happy with the reforms Justinian and Theodora had been implementing conspired to keep the riots going, hoping to replace Justinian himself. Now the senators put forth a few candidates for new emperors. Probus, Pompeius, and Hypatius. All nephews of the previous emperor. Unfortunately for the senators, none of these were ideal choices. Why? What was the problem with those candidates? A. None of them wanted the job. B. The blues wanted one guy and the greens wanted another. Or C. The oldest of the candidates was only five years old. Ha <laughs> nah. That's pretty funny. <laughs> All right, what'd you put? C, the, the baby shit. Baby shit. Too many babies. Sure. Uh, Ricky? I put B. Blue and green couldn't agree on one just because I miss a rivalry. Well, points to neither of you. Oh. No. Yeah, none of the candidates really wanted to be emperor. In fact, just the opposite. They wanted to be buds with Justinian. Rioters swarmed Probus' house to declare him emperor, but he fled town. The rioters responded by burning his house to the ground. Jelly beans for you both. Great, awesome. Meanwhile, the other two candidates, Pompeius and Hypatius, hold up in the palace with Justinian. The next day, Justinian sent his general, Belisarius, and his men out to battle the rioters. Now details are fuzzy, and while Belisarius' men certainly slaughtered plenty of green blues, the Green Blues outnumbered the soldiers and won the battle, making them now even angrier at Justinian. Uh, jelly beans all around. How were the numbers? 
I don't know. Why do you always gotta ask questions about these specific things? Because I want the context. I want to know how much they outnumbered them by. You know what? I'm remembering. I think on the blue greens there were about much more than 1,500. And on Justinian's side, there were about 1,500. On the fourth day, the rioters returned to the Praetorium, the prison whose fire started this whole dang thing and started another fire. They then tried to burn the baths of Alexander, but the wind took the flames and set fire to a hospital, a church, and then another hospital. Hey, jelly beans! Nice, love burning down hospitals. Yeah, oops. What kind of idiot is trying to set a bathhouse on fire? He's idiot. I'm gonna set this pool on fire. Yeah. I'd be pissed <laughs> if I was chilling at the baths and someone tried to set it on fire. Well, you would just go underwater, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. That's what Indiana Jones did in Last Crusade. But then you gotta do that thing where you come above water and try not to get in the flames, otherwise your face burn off. Your face burn off. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like your face was burning off while you said otherwise that. Otherwise your face burn off. Day five was more of the same. Fights between rioters and Belisarius' troops, fires burning churches, oh, same old, same old. Inside the palace, however, Justinian was understandably starting to, uh, go nuts. At this point, the palace guards were disobeying him and senators were publicly trying to replace him. Paranoia took root, and Justinian became highly suspicious of Pompeius and Hypatius, demanding they leave the palace. The two pleaded with Justinian to let them stay, but that only made him more suspicious, and he insisted they leave immediately. On the sixth day of the riots, Justinian returned to the Cathisma in the Hippodrome, armed with a copy of the Gospels. Before the crowd, he swore on the Bible that everyone in the riots would be granted amnesty and that they could have basically whatever they wanted. At this point, however, what they wanted was a new emperor. And the crowd cried out, Long live Hypatius! Hey, speaking of Hypatius, the Green Blues learned he'd been kicked out of the palace and they stormed his house, demanding he take the throne as the new emperor. Hypatius still had zero desire for the job, begging the rioters to stop as they dragged him from his home. At the Forum of Constantine, Hypatius was crowned with a golden chain. Hey, jelly beans! Dude, that's so scary. Just to have a bunch of people outside your house being like, rule me! Yeah. Please rule me now! Rule you me! You are in charge of me now, daddy! It's kind of crazy, because that's how Watcher Entertainment was formed. Me and you outside Steven's house. Start a company, daddy! Of course, we were naked, but... Yes, you and Shane were. And I oh. was as well. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so at this point, the riot faced the question most successful riots eventually have to deal with. Uh, now what? One group of senators decided, well, they could go to the Hippodrome, kick Justinian and Theodora out of the Cathisma, and just toss Hypatius in there. Why not? Well, that plan, um, worked. Hey, nice, more jelly beans for the both of you. Great. <laughs> cool. Wow. Justinian and Theodora fled back to the palace, and there, after consulting with John the Cappadocian and Belisarius, Justinian decided the only thing left for him to do was flee across the sea. There was only one thing in their way. Fire. A. The rioters burned down the marina and all the boats. B. Justinian would probably be executed when he landed in Heraclea. Or C. Theodora had no time for cowards. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Answer that shit. Are you even looking at your board while you write that? I was thinking. You're channeling the spirit of history, letting it flow through you. <laughs> you got something good? Yeah. Okay, what do you got? You look excited. All right, see, cucks must die. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Ricky, what do you got? I wrote B, executed mm -hmm. upon arrival, because I like the option of, yeah. if you do this, you're gonna die. Yeah, that's gonna be a little point. For old pal Bergus. Nice. Yeah. Yes, while the men wanted to abandon the empire, Theodora had come from the streets, and she had no desire to ever go back there. Showing the room what real leadership sounds like, Theodora reportedly said, quote, For one who has been an emperor, it is unendurable to be a fugitive. May I never be separated from this purple, and may I not live that day on which those who meet me shall not address me as mistress. If now it is your wish to save yourself, O Emperor, there is no difficulty, for we have much money, and there is the sea, here the boats. However, consider whether it will not come about, after you have been saved, that you would gladly exchange that safety for death. 
For as for myself, I approve a certain ancient saying that royalty is a good burial shroud. Ho, ho, ho. Oh man. What a poet. She's like Laura Dern in Big Little Lies. She's just like Laura <laughs> Dern. I will not not be rich. <laughs> right, The yeah. best line ever, yeah. Moved by his wife's addiction to that good life, Justinian agreed to stay in power. Well, back in the Hippodrome's Cathisma, Hypatius was, at least according to the Green Blues, now emperor and in charge of the writhing mass of rioters before him. So, as emperor, what did Hypatius do first? A. He demanded Justinian be put to death. B. He disbanded the blue and green chariot teams entirely. Or C. He tried to kill everyone in the Hippodrome. Ha! <laughs> Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Cool. Reveal your answers. I just put A, death. I mean, he's probably like, that's the only real call he has there. Just kill him. Uh, Ricky. I put B, no blue, no green, because that's, I think, what was giving him the headache. Well, we're going to find out once more via the magic of theater. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects are really. Really good. Top notch. Oh, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. This is bad, this is bad. Oh, my liege, the people of your empire await whatever your wish is. Oh, God, no, I do not want this job. Can't I just, like, give this gold chain back and keep living my life? No, I, I don't think so. I think you're stuck being emperor. You now rule over all these screaming, violence-addicted pyromaniacs. Congratulations! Fuck. Okay, in that case, uh, you remember where the palace is, right? Uh-huh. Could you, uh, quick, run this little note over to Emperor Justinian? Hmm, what's it say? Let's see, this begs Justinian to come and murder all the people in the Hippodrome. No, no, you weren't supposed to read it! Just go! Okay. Oh, fuck! <laughs> 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 well, okay, well, technically points to neither of you, but Ricky sort of realized the answer, so hey, a jelly bean for Ricky! Yay! Oh, Thank you! Yeah, Hypatius just wanted Justinian to come and slaughter everyone, but the message he got back was that Justinian allegedly was gone. Hypatius really had no choice but to resign himself to being the Byzantine Emperor. Oh. Guess I have to be king. Would you guys want to be president? I feel like no. probably not fun. No. no I don't way. need that much power. Too much responsibility. Yes. I can't play my Fortnites, you know? No. Yeah. Uh, well, having not actually fled at all, back in the palace, Justinian had hatched a plan. He sent a trusted eunuch, Narses, to the Hippodrome to pay people in the crowd to sow division amongst the Green Blues. Rumors circulated that Hypatius' uncle was associated with the Greens and that the new emperor would thus favor them. Meanwhile, the Blues were reminded how Justinian had grown up a Blues fan in Theodore's blood. Oh, it still ran blue. With the Green-Blue Alliance teetering, Belisarius charged into the crowd. Now feeling less than enthused about a potentially Green-favoring Emperor, the Blues abruptly left. Some now chanting, Justinian, King for the City! I guess if somebody came up to me and was like, you know, the Lakers really only have 16 championships because that one was kind of rigged with the Kings in 2002, I, I would get a little upset. Yeah. Or if it's like, Shaq carried Kobe. I'd be like, I oh, know he didn't. I'm, no, I could see it. You know, I could see how I would get a little riled up. You might kill? That might you drive know, you to kill? Get enough tequizas in me? Yeah. Perhaps I'll kill. <laughs> Those who stayed in the Hippodrome decided to lay down their weapons, but nevertheless, Belisarius' men cut through the crowd. As John Julius Norwich wrote, quote, the angry shouts of the great amphitheater had given place to the cries and groans of wounded and dying men. Soon these too grew quiet until silence spread over the entire arena, its sand now sodden with the blood of the victims. Oh. It's believed these soldiers killed over 30,000 people, about 10% of the city's population. From the Cathisma, Hypatius sat and watched, perhaps pondering the coincidence that, well, while it never reached Justinian, his request for this exact outcome came true. Yay. No one ever thought to just toss a spear up into that Cathisma and just kill him? I don't know, I guess not. You know, I'm imagining this dome, this arena, and I'm thinking Theodora needs to do the swan act there Whoa. and unite everyone. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. true. Bring in the swan. Yes, bring in the swan. That'll placate them. That'll keep them mesmerized. And yes. then you kill them all. <laughs> 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 oh, when the slaughter was complete, Hypatius was taken to the palace. There, he begged Justinian for his life, since he never wanted to be crowned emperor in the first place. 
Justinian believed him, but in order to prevent future mobs from trying to install Hypatius on the throne, he ordered Hypatius's execution. And Pompeius's too, for good oh. measure. The next day, the men were executed and cast into the sea, capping off what must have been a pretty crazy week for those fellas. <laughs> it's interesting how killing people is just the <laughs> standard. Sort of the go-to back yes, then. Yes, exactly. Yeah. There's no like middle ground. Like it seems very extreme. I yeah. think exile could have been like a nice right. little thing. Right? Happy I mean, medium. With the riot subdued, Justinian was now more powerful than he was before the whole ordeal. He banned the 18 senators who conspired to replace him, and no one dared stand against him ever again, ruling for another 33 years, building the Hagia Sophia in the meantime, and finally dying at the ripe old age of 82. Good run. I was about to say. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and also his wife stayed rich. And to think he was Power so couple. close to fleeing. Yeah. It was only couple. because she was like, hey, this fucking Tesla's not gonna charge itself, you <laughs> right. motherfucker. Get back out there and start killing some people. Yeah. He was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. And that's why he stayed king. After the riots, the Hippodrome was shut down for a bit and the races were suspended. But when they started back up five years later, the blues and the greens never united again. Well, the Byzantine Empire had been on shaky grounds when two men's necks refused to snap on January 10th, 532. But after surviving the Nika riots, the reforms that Justinian put in place, known as the Code of Justinian, ensured the empire's survival for another almost 1,000 years. Even after that, the Code of Justinian has been the basis for most of the world's least repressive legal systems. Decent legacy for a guy who was almost opposed by some NASCAR fans. And that's the story. What do you think of that one, boys? It is an insane story that a sports rivalry got so heated that it almost led to the fall of an empire. Yeah. You know, they say history teaches us a lesson. And I think this lesson is don't join teams with your enemies. Team's bad. Laker fans, Celtic fans should never fraternize. Otherwise, 30,000 of us will die. 30,000 will die in the crypto arena. <laughs> That's right, in crypto.com arena, we'll all get killed at half court. Well, that concludes our history lesson. Ricky I is the history wizard. Kept the score, and that's definitely who won. Thank you. Oh, great job, hon. And that is why you handle all the bills at home. No, no, guys, we, we don't do this yet. We, we still have to do the song. Oh, the song is always my favorite. You know what? The history was it is a song. No, no, mom, it's one of the contestants, remember? Hey, don't you take that tone with your mother. Yeah, that's no way to become a history wizard. Yeah, maybe they should sort this shit out backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Again, I'm I am not the history wizard. It's either Beef Boy or Ricky. I already told you it's Ricky. Not yet! Son. I love you, but you are not good at managing dinosaurs. Okay, I'll work on it. Uh, listen, while my mommy tallies the scores to determine the actual history wizard, please enjoy this fiery performance from the friggin' Hippodrome! Whoa! That was incredibly Whoa. unprofessional. Oh, you mean that? The whole, whole, whole blue we just witnessed. Pretty unprofessional. You know Constantinople, it's a pretty raucous scene. But I fear things may be getting out of line The Queens of Blues got nothing to lose And they're starting to conspire People getting clobbered on the cobblestones And the hippodromes on fire They put their quibbles aside And politicians are hiding And they ought to cause a lot of folks are calling for blood Pack your bags and take a hike before your noggin's on a pike Nika Nika, hear him cry, join the cause of fucking die Whoever would have thought these juice of jocks would organize Or that an interest in blood sport could stoke a passion for poli-sci But here we are I never dreamed they would have taken it this far Got nothing to lose and they're tearing through this town. Oh, Justinian, please, won't you heed their needs before they burn it to the ground? They're pouring out of the 
understands They gotta listen to me And they're picking up their torches And they're calling your name Pack your bags and take a hike Before your noggin's on a pike We can make a hear him cry Join the call to fucking die Well they set me fire to Constantinople You can try to hide away with the hope They'll tire of hollering and hooting Quit their hula can loot But these torch toting Philistines Are fired up and gaining steam Shit's getting wrecked in old Byzantine You better watch your neck around blues and greens But I'll say this for the riots If you're dissatisfied Try and maybe just break some bones Or wait and see how that affects their policies Bravo! Cool. All right. Love that. Whoa! Wow, wow, wow! What a really energetic performance! Um, okay, Mom, who is getting the title in this episode? According to my calculation, our history wizard is Ricky Wayne. And we're giving Ryan another beef hat because he's looking sexy today or something. I don't know, guy needs a win. Whoa, okay. Uh, why don't you guys come up here and grab your coveted caps, which you have so rightly earned. Wow! Math is a little different in my head. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's weird. History wizard! Thank you, professor. I mean, thank our judges over there. Oh, thank you, judges. Oh, they're getting better at making those hats. Good job on that one, Mom and Dad. Um, all right, well, uh, thank you, Ricky Wang, for being here. Ryan, thank you for being a friend. And to all you folks at home, thanks for watching Puppet History, where the details are always a little fuzzy. Bye-bye! Whoa!